do the research in pre-production and then you kind of forget about it a little bit and just use your instincts. Instincts, experience, knowledge. You know, all the photographs were from the 1860s, 1870s, so they're all 20 years too late, really, because photography only really started in the early 19th century, so it was in its infancy. Apart from portraiture, which is, was became becoming quite popular in the 1840s. You know, we had a scene in the theatre, so this is theoretically a magic lantern. Obviously, as I would do with most period films, is be true to the technology of the time, so... So I found this picture here and I wanted to use a spotlight to light the, the scene in the theatre, but then I went, okay, well, you, spotlights weren't, didn't exist in the 1840s, the, the way that spotlight, theatrical spotlights that we know of now. But they had magic lanterns, but magic lanterns are basically either candles or oil lights, so they don't really, th so when I found this picture and I went, I got it, I got it. It did exist, maybe 10 years ahead of its time, but I still use the spotlight anyway. And will anybody notice? I don't know, I hope not. Yeah, maybe the people watching this will look at the movie and go, yeah, you cheated a little there. I don't think this is un un unusual. This is, a I would guess that most cinematographers use find references. Weirdly, this, this, this is the references of, this is just came from the internet, but it just looked like a, a scene that we actually shot in the industrial um, location in Dublin. But I love all this, it's, it's the 1840s and mid 19th centuries. But they're all based on, most of them are based on photographic references, whether they be contemporary, period, anything to get my head into what the film's trying to tell me and I'm trying to tell the, the audience, you see. But the more research you can do, the better it is because you do the research in pre-production and then you kind of forget about it a little bit and just use your instincts. Instinct, experience, knowledge. It's mood references for a film I did called My Route with Marilyn, which was about Marilyn Monroe in the 50s when she came from London to do a film with Laurence Olivier. So I would find references, all photographs of, of Marilyn and the historical records of the time, you know, within a 10 year period. So these are all reportage photographs, you know, either set up photographs or photographs from newspapers or magazines. So I'd be quite specific. See, this is a, actually a photograph from the, the time when she arrived in London with, with Arthur Miller, her, her, her new husband. So, and this was the film she was making with Olivier. So I'd go through, and then to the articles, just so I knew I could know everything about that era and, and that, that moment in time. But then I'd go, what I really want to look at is not just pictures of Marilyn, but I want to look at pictures of references to movie sets. A lot of the film took place on a movie set. So then I'd look at pictures of 30s, 40s Hollywood from the heyday in London and in, in England in the 30s, 40s and 50s. And, and this would give me ideas about lighting and composition and colour and tone. And then I'd look at photographers again. I'd go back to photography and it would take me... Because obviously I wasn't making the movie in black and white. Then I'd look at colour references, period references. It didn't matter. These are pictures of late 50s, early 60s didn't have to be exactly, but at approximately the same period. This is references for a, a TV movie I did called The Dresser, which was a remake of a movie from the early 80s. And this TV movie I did with Richard Eyre, with Anthony Hopkins and Ian McKellen, and we shot that last year. This all takes place in the theatre in the wartime England. So these are references of theatres. Trying to find old reference photographs from backstage theatres, you know, so you've got all these flymen who were just flying the, uh, the sets up in, in, in and out of the, of, of the stages. And, uh, so I'd look for all, anything, that can, it could be a light reference, it could be contemporary, it could be, I, I really just try and explore it as much as I can, it's, just, it's a lot of legwork. This was a movie set in um, London, a contemporary movie. So these are film references, these are other references from other movies that I liked. Very specific, mostly composition and colour. I can be very specific, so I can use that again and again and again. And then this, is, this was for a TV series called Hollow Crown. So I break down, we had battle scenes in there, and obviously we didn't have as much money as they did on some of John Matheson's movies. So we didn't have that kind of money, it was a BBC film. So, but we did our best, so I tried to break down battle scenes and how they were shot. 
in reality, had there was 25,000 people involved in the battle. Well, we weren't going to get 25,000 people over the BBC. Fair enough. So we got like 200. So it's not easy, you know. And but then again, you speak to John. I mean, he's shot some much bigger movies than I have with big battle scenes, and even he struggles. But he's worked out ways of making it effective and the scenes are very effective he had a lot more cameras than we did he had a, lot, a bit more time and whatever but you're still kind of struggling with this void at the back of your location where there's not 10,000 people i think sometimes if you choose the right location it just works it's kind of a bowl and there's a forest around it and it looked big and he got it right it's just ideas and as i said before sometimes it's the process of doing it that's most important. The end result is just a load of pictures. It's actually the process of researching it and reading about it so you understand. You understand where these pictures come in and, and it's all about, as I said, a moment in time. So, and, and also I'm trying to get into the, into the head of the director, especially with the lighting and the composition, is what I aesthetically like, I, what interests me aesthetically. And this could run across all movies. So if you keep doing this, that you'll find, you'll go, well, actually, something I did in that movie or whatever, or that TV series or that, will become very useful uh, mm -hmm. later because my, comp my aesthetics on composition haven't really changed that much. If you look at The Damned United, it had a very specific style. Now, that style originally came from documentaries in the early 80s, theoretically, and then we used it in commercials and music videos where you use negative space, you, 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 use, you try and compose images in a slightly different way, but you... But either with lighting, you, you, you're still allowing the audience to... You're still pinpointing where you think you want the audience to look. And that can be, that's a composition and lighting thing anyways. 